I'm glad it's night, so the light from the sun would not burn me on my bum when I shoot the moon. He was got a tribute to the ground with a pulverizing tackle from Ambrose. Oh, I think the bombers are going to go over it here. Bombers have won. Welcome to the Windy Hill Windsock with me, The Solution, and joining me this evening is Fiona. Hello. Have I got my days wrong? Am I a day too early? Did I die? Yeah. What's going on? The Fiona's forecast, we're doing it a day early, primarily because my boys' weekend starts shortly, so I have to do it tonight. I, I won't be able to do it tomorrow, and therefore I should just flag nice and early a bit of housekeeping. The podcast will be a day late also. So I don't know what state I'll be in. I'll probably sound like one of the contestants on the RuPaul's Drag Race by Tuesday night. I'll be a bit but, disappointed if you don't, to be quite honest. Yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> I may even look like one, so depending live. on what, what happens. But, uh, yeah, so... We're going a day early, which means there'll be no ch ch, -ch changes because... Well, we, can, we can maybe f predict the changes that we think are going to happen. I think, I th and I think they're pretty straightforward. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll maybe touch on them briefly, but, of course, anything we say could be redundant in 24 yeah. hours, so we don't yeah. want to spend too much time. Fair enough. So that'll be an abridged segment, but we will do the smoking Joe, the sitting Joe. We'll predict the winner which should be interesting because in the podcast proper that we did in in a, a cruel kind of, not cruel, but a strange twist of fate, I picked Essendon and you've gone against them, which is unusual. So we'll do that and we'll do a couch question at the end. But in terms of uh, the ch -ch changes, we don't know what the team will be, but we did see, you saw the announcement with Menzi. Yes. Yes. As the architect would say, Menzies. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've heard it's a shoulder, but have you heard the real, well, the rumour that's going on? Because no, I know you're I, pretty close to the... I think you're going to tell me what the rumour is. Yeah, well, it also, and look, I don't know if it's true, but I, I feel bad because he's won three Hennemans in a row. But what I have been told is he's got a chronic kind of issue that's come to light, uh -huh. which is a severe allergy problem have you, have you heard this to the, to the leather to the, to the leather yes <laughs> damn listeners you did not I, I did not know this joke before you did not set me up no but you're way too smart i thought i'd be able to uh at, at least you, get you gonna laugh really... at me you gotta laugh yeah. at me yeah so i don't think that's going to be a great loss i, I expect it just means the outside of sin might be the the sum total with davy uh, i think that's a good i think uh, Hind will start and Sardis will be sub, and I'm more than happy with that. There's a bit of flexibility with Sardis, so I'm happy for him to come on and, and play wing, play high, you know, high half forward if he has to, and and or run through the midfield. So he could even pinch hit half back if he had to. So I think that's a, a reasonable sub. Yeah, except I would say I'd rather Hind as a sub. Oh, I'm just hesitant to change any. Don't change what works, and I'm hesitant. Mm. I'd love to see the same lineup go into into Ad the Adelaide game, and a hind for Menzies most like for like. Yeah, I don't know. I like hind as the. Is he the super sub? He's not got the super sub. Maybe he's a super sub. Oh, I think. I think we just got to give him a. We're got, it's going to be doing him and our team and his performance no good to keep being a sub. So I think at some point, and I think this is the week to do it. Okay. Well, we won't labour the point. We'll find out tomorrow and yep. I guess on um, Friday. And let's just, I mean, I know there were rumours that Jai called well, but I'm touching all the wood. There was, a, if you hadn't heard it, there was a few whispers. I think Channel yeah. 7 even ran with it, mainly because he was training away from the group apparently, but... But our, our friend of the pod, Charlie, confirmed that he also did that um, last week. So read into that what you want. Keep in mind that we've also got a short turnaround to Anzac Day, you know, yeah. next week. So there's a few up in the air. But I'd say if he was out, I'd say Sardis would come in and maybe Caddy is your sub. 
Because I don't think we've got anybody else. <laughs> no, no, that's right. That's maybe right. they make Shield sub. I know it would be very silly to give him a game after just a half in the VFL because he, he did look like uh, unfit in terms of just hasn't played football in a long time. He looked very slick and, you know, was in good touch. But, um, yeah. But he could be, he could be good for 20 minutes. Yeah, hour. but what if we get an injury in the first quarter? Then he's playing. Then he's playing three quarters, and he's he's struggling to run by 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 the fourth quarter. So there's yeah. just fraught with danger. I just don't think that's smart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. You Let's know. just pray for Caldwell. Yes, yes, um, played a great game last week. Oh, so still underrated. Still not getting talked about. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he will be a few more performances like that than he will be. But so, in terms of the game itself mm. and the smoking Joe and sitting Joe, I, I didn't even say it at the start. We're playing Adelaide in Adelaide, of course, Friday. Well, we'd hope everybody um, listening to this podcast are Essen supporters. So you'd think they'd know. You'd that. think they'd be across that, but yeah, in case you're not, we do have a few supporters. We do have a few listeners from overseas, of course. Yes. Yeah. Shout out the Apprentice in the Hague in, in hey. Holland, by the way. And any but, and, not, and any poor wives who are listening or husbands who are listening to it because their spouse is listening to the pod on loud and they have to endure our voices. Shout out. That would be a fate worse than death, I think. But yeah, uh, yeah so there, there may be non Eston fans is the point. But yeah, playing Adelaide in Adelaide, smoking Joe, sitting Joe. So people that don't know, these are the two awards we give before the game. The smoking Joe is the guy who's going to smoke, who's going to raise his level. The sitting Joe will sit on the fence, Joe Danaher like, and disappoint and and go beneath his level. Which one are you doing? I can never remember. You've got the smoking this week. Oh, excellent. Who have you got? Well, you go first. The smoking right. goes first, always. Okay, well, I better get the team up you then. Think <laughs> after a year now, a year and a half of doing this podcast, of doing Fiona's forecast. You yell, like, you yell at the architect. True. Yeah, it's do as I say, not as I do. Mm. But I, I was just padding while I decide. Um, I'm going to say... See, so many guys played well last week that it's kind of hard to say... Like, if we, if we use... If last week was the baseline... Be a lot harder to find a player who'll raise his level, and it'd be easy to find a guy that um, will perform poorly. But I'm going to go for somebody who I reckon has just needed the weeks to work his way back into it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> work his way into fitness. Well, we'd suck two thousand. And he's had a month now just to work his way back. Maybe some learnings thrown in. Darcy Parish. It is your time to shine, my friend. You've been underwhelming. What stats did um, Winstock 2000 lay on us today a bit from champion data? Yeah, we don't, we don't like to give too much, too much credence to the old champion data mm-hmm. stats, but uh, apparently he's rated second worst in the league. Uh, uh, that for sounds... effectiveness or something. For effectiveness, was that it? But who's the worst, by the way? Well, it's your mate. Yeah, Joe Menzi. Or Joe Menzi. I find that outrageous that Parrish is that low. I, I, I just, I think, what, you're telling me nobody from North Melbourne rated lower? I need to check Winsock's um, 2000s workings because that just doesn't, or no one from West, Hawthorne? Hawthorne? No, surely. We he's, need to double check his rating. I don't know, man. He's an, he's, he's an AI, so um, he's meant to have his finger on the pulse. But yeah, the glitch, that sounds like a glitch to me. Anyway, I reckon Darcy Parrish would probably, look, wherever he lands in that stupid champion's data, I'm not a stats guy, by the way, I prefer the eye test. Yep. Uh, but wherever, wherever he's landed in statistically, he should probably look at last week and go, right, it's time for me to step up. I've been kind of average compared to the way I can play and the expectations that are on me, time for me to step up. So I think he will this week. And It doesn't – it's just his ball use. I've liked his energy and his, his effort. 
I've really quite liked that around the ground. I watched it closely, particularly last week, um, because of how he was tracking. It's just the ball use. Uh, he's still doing the, the you know, burrowing in and getting the ball yeah. out. It's just there's something not quite right. Like I, little I mean, handballs that are going in the completely wrong direction. Yeah. Uh, and I don't reckon, I reckon, like, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I'd guess his handball to kick ratio is well in favour of handballs. Mm. And I don't reckon he's just getting away. He's getting that separation that he sometimes gets from his opponent and from packs. Oh, you reckon so, he's getting more attention? I don't know if it's attention or whether he's just not Could be. 100% fit or he's playing with a, something or he's, his fitness was compromised pre-season and he's... I don't know. I don't know. But he's not getting separation. That's the thing for me. He's definitely not a, a silk ball user, but at his best, mm. you know, he's running away from the pack, yeah. kicking at least to advantage of our forwards, 40 metres, 50 metres, whatever the mm. case might be. Mm. So, um, Yeah, he's he's doing a lot of balls like up and down the chimney, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of them. And, and that, we, we are, yeah, you're right, we are a bit used to that when it comes to him, but yeah, so it's yeah, yeah. I think that's he's either just lagging a bit from a limited preseason, mm. or he's getting a bit of closer attention, and they're just not giving him enough room. We'll have to watch him a bit closer and see if anyone's. Yeah, but I hope I'm right. I think he can turn it around. I think he's a talented player, and we're very, very quick to throw the baby yeah. out with the bathwater. We're very, very quick to label somebody as crap. Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, no, no, no. He's. There's no, there's no realm in which I'm dropping him. No way. Yeah, I'm just looking at his stats from last week, and yeah, there you go. Seven kicks, fifteen handballs. Yeah. Did have five tackles, which is pleasing. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Like the effort is there, and mm. the intent is there. You said that. Yeah. 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 You can see that. It's it's the same with Laverdi. It's the same with my issue with Liberty. I can see the efforts there. Yeah. He's not he's not shying away from contests. He's he's courageous. He goes for marks that you know, and he gets some marks that he should, mm. sometimes shouldn't just from pure courage. And he's trying his guts out. He, I just don't think he's got it. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. I just think he gets beaten by a lot of his opponents. That's all. But it's not for lack of effort. Um, mm. And, and granted, he was very good against St Kilda in the last quarter, but he had his, like, he started on Norton, but Norton got the first first mark for Bulldogs and the first goal. And so immediately the coach's box switched him onto U Ugo yeah, Hagen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Hugo Hagen had the game of his life, you know? So I just, and he's, and I know you said he's a giving away height. He's not giving away, I've watched that replay on repeat. A lot, almost every night, <laughs> and I watch them. I watch them side by side, and again, it's the eye test. I didn't have to go in and look at the actual centimeters, but he's not giving away a lot of height. So, you know, yeah, I reckon. But, but, but the good thing that we can rest, that we can, that we can at least uh, go to sleep on, is that they're both actually giving a lot of maximum effort. So, hmm. which more broadly was was Scott's. Uh, comment about the prior week when we we got beaten by port it's not an effort issue yeah, yeah. and I, I trust him on that i trust him on that i think he's got players giving 100 percent effort most of the time um but yeah it's other things it's it's decision making it's it's stuff above the shoulders a lot of the time yeah i think uh, it's just reading of the play full of yeah. reading, but i think for parish yeah, I think you've I think you've either nailed it. Maybe he's just lagging a bit because he had that interrupted preseason, um, and maybe maybe he does fit in the box of he's just finding giving him five weeks now to get in the swing of things. So. <laughs> All right, smoke yeah, and well, Joe, let's go, Paz. Well, that was a smoke and Joe. Yeah. Okay. Paz, yeah. So so who's your sitting? All right, my sitting Joe. Hmm. There's a few obvious ones, but I don't want to do the obvious. Good. I'm going to say, in a complete reverse moz, I'm going to say Gresham. That would be disappointing. 
yeah, would be very disappointing. And this is, again, a complete another Moz, but he's the first player that came to my head and I'm going with my gut. So uh, I'm hoping that I'm really wrong, but Gresh has got the nom nomination to me. But I have no backing to it. There is no reason. I have no information. There's no... I say that just to give you a name because you require a name from me. Do you think maybe he'll think he's in the showdown and maybe go to the Ramsgate Hotel and throw punches the night before? Yeah, I don't know. If, I think Brad Scott puts a, a chain on the, on the hotel gates, on the hotel doors, just in case. Oh, it's Adelaide. They, they already... They oh, already roll, they roll up the pavement when it's when it's dark, so don't worry about that's that. That's true. That's true. Very true. So you know, I don't think we'll have to worry about that. Or maybe just Travis. But he just he's just going to tell Travis Cloak to just park himself outside the door. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you what. He's gonna argue. Every he's time gonna argue. you see Travis Cloak, he just looks like a kid in a candy store. He's frothing being now runner. He loves it. Absolutely yeah, yeah. loves it. He's got the smile from ear to ear, and he's just he's just loving being in amongst it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of us now. Yeah, definitely one of us. He's absolutely over to the dark side. Hmm. Now, are you going to give a Houdini since you can't give it to who you wanted to give it to? Oh, because Menzies not. Well, we we don't know who's going to survive the cull. But oh, okay. So, well, what if what if we'll just do it on what we suspect is going to happen. If Sardis gets his sub and Hind gets elevated. Hind? Can I say Hind? <laughs> I mean, it's your award, but um, be pretty, I just think who's replacing Hind? <laughs> we have no one to replace him in the VFL. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't, I don't, I don't really think there would be a Houdini award. Like, to your point earlier, um, old mate... Uh, the bird isn't playing well, but we don't have options. No, it's no. It, just, it breaks my heart that Baldwin injured himself because he was, as I said yeah. to you, what I say to you, my source said in the preseason, Gresham and Baldwin, the two absolute ones that were just mm. above everybody else, even above merit, just ticking all those boxes, and he would be in replacing Ridley if he wasn't injured, and it's just so upsetting. Because yeah, he yeah, deserves yeah. it. Well, he, Reed, and Ridley, three three defenders gone. Do you reckon we'll see Ridley, Reed, and Mackay together again this year? What does your gut say? No. <gasps> that would be disaster. Well, on the on the injury rep injury report, it says six to eight weeks for Ridley and two to four for Reed. Yeah, well, Reed's Reed's got. He's, he's going to end up basically having two months of awareness. Yeah. Well, so, in fairness, they're being ultra conservative with him, which is right. That's what they said last time. That's true. Sorry. No, you're right. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But it yeah, would have, no, have to be like round, you know, 17, 18, 19, if, if anything. Yep. Which is really frustrating. Mm, no, I, I, I couldn't say anyone's lucky to. If it if it's basically as we think, yeah, there's not going to be anyone that's lucky to still be there because we we just need people. We need bodies. Well, but anyway, my favourite line when somebody said that. Well, go to the morgue. We do. If, we just, <laughs> if you just need a body, then go to the morgue. <laughs> We kind of did that. From, that's from Shits Creek. I should credit that. That's very funny. Okay, okay that's not bad. Yeah. Um, we kind of did that during the top-up year. We went to the footballing morgue we and did. resurrected a bunch of... We absolutely did. ...footballing zombies. That was great. That's a great yeah. analogy. Do you remember absolutely. some of the names? Uh, I remember Crowley. Yeah, Crowley. Tager, I forgot about that. Yep. And what about... Uh, did James Kelly? Did he come? Was he a topper? Yeah, as was uh, Chappie as well. Chappie, yeah. Um, what about Chappie. the guy with the fro? Or was Zach he a trade? Clark? No, not Zach, Zach Clark. Clark. The other guy. Starts oh. with G. Starts with G. Defender. Yeah, um, from St Kilda. Yeah, from St Kilda. Quilt. 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 
Was he a top yeah. up or do we trade for him? Can't remember. I hope he was a top up. If we <laughs> traded for him, whoever traded for him was guilty. <laughs> <laughs> guilty of a serious we'll just portrayal. give that one, another one to xavier campbell shall we um yeah. yeah that was great we got the zombies we got the football zombies we mm. did we went to we the did. footy morgue we were the fentanyl oh. bombers wow <laughs> but those were the days not those, those were the days yeah. so uh we're gonna go to so that's the sitting joe smoking joe we're gonna go to the game now don't we so what do you reckon? We discussed it a bit on the podcast. We did. You felt Adelaide might have our measure at the time. Yeah. I feel, like, I feel like they've got their mojo, clearly, and I feel like they're going to know what works now, now that they've had that win against uh, Carlton. They're back on track, and they're going to feel like they're back on track, so they're going to be have a bit more of a pep in their step. And I just feel like there was such a big contrast in the way they played to the first three rounds that there's a clear distinction as to what worked and what didn't. And I just think that it's just so easy for them to now just go with what worked. That might sound like so, like such simplicity. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you're giving me this blank look. No, no, no. What I'm, what I'm wondering, I was going to ask you, is how much did Carlton potentially maybe drinking their own bath water, thinking they're invincible, undefeatable, just go in and not worry about the opposition. And given given we've just come out from a week where we've played really accountable football and focused on some key men from their team, are we going to make at least Adelaide's midfield work a lot harder than possibly Carlton's did? Yeah, there might be a bit more accountability, but I think I think definitely Carlton played poorly, but Adelaide certainly played better than they have been, if that makes sense. So it was a it was a bit from this pot and a bit from that pot. Hmm. Um, and I, I just think I think we'd be silly not to go in with those accountability matchups because we have the weapons as we've shown, and they have the they have the threats. So, mm. you know, how Leon Rankin when he's back is a no-brainer for me. Uh, somebody watching Rankin when he's in the midfield is a no-brainer for me. Saligo is another one of their mids who's a bit like our Sammy Durham going under the radar, but he's doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Their captain who's been in not good form, Dawson, he'll need watching because he'll be wanting to step up. Um, and again, as I said on the pod, I think their forward line is dangerous. Um, I'm a big Fogarty fan, big, big Fogarty fan, and I'm worried that he's going to get off the leash because he'll be matched up on Laverty. And he's given away, speaking of giving away height and weight, Fogarty's a big, big boy, a big boy. Um, and also, they're at home, I mean, first and foremost. Yeah, which that'll, you know, will give all the all the additional kind of pros that it gives to the home team, crowd mm. and familiarity to the ground and being able to train on the ground, all those added extra pros. But um, Umpiring decisions often. Exactly, yeah. Um, some dodgy umpiring. Speaking of umpiring, I feel like we got the, we got looked after on Friday night. All right, can I, can I make a can, – can I say something really quietly? Now, I know – not many people listen to this podcast. But what I want to say... Is that how we like it? Correct. <laughs> Can we have all football coaches from now on, former heads of the umpiring department? <laughs> because I have a theory, and I haven't backed it up with stats, because we all know I don't do that. I have a theory that there that we've, we've been on the receiving end of some really good umpiring a lot this year, far more than prior seasons. And even last year, things started to turn around. And I just wonder whether, you know, Brad Scott is the former boss of these umpires and would have had their access to their HR files. Hang um, on. You think we got, we got umpired well against St Kilda? 
You were sitting uh, behind me and you could hear everyone losing their minds. Yeah, no, not that game. I'm just saying on average, I won I reckon we've done far better. We've done far better in the last two years than the previous um, Are you basing 10. that on how much whinging you've done on Twitter about it? The whinge is, is that your yeah, is that your rate? Like is that how you measure it? The Twitter whingeometer yeah. um does it's is one word. is one indicator. Is that a word? Yeah, okay. But yeah, I, I, I get a feeling Or is this an eye test? Is it the eye test? Or is it's it the uh, whingeometer? It's the whingeometer divided by a coefficient of the eye <laughs> test <laughs> okay. times by the gut feel. And then spat out. Positive. Yeah, it's, it's spat out positive. I just Are you touch, can right. you just touch that bit of wood behind you, please? Because um, I, I would hate in two nights' time to be coming back to this and saying you fucked us sideways by saying this, by putting it out there yeah. to the universe. That's why I said quietly. Like, oh, yeah. I, I know this doesn't go out to many people, no. but uh, although the numbers are many people for my liking, but uh, beside the point, I think Friday night we got looked after very well. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm saying it's an emerging trend that belies the previous decade. I can't say my eye test is completely on board your theory. However, I am conceding that Friday night we were umpired well. We got No, um, when I say we got taken care of, the first, aside from the St Kilda game, the other games, I feel like we've been umpired evenly. So no fuckery. Hmm. But the even St. evenly. The game was full of fuckery. And then on yeah, Friday yeah. night, we were taken care of. But I'd say even e to break even is a net win for us. Oh, okay. If you're saying that, then yes. The f Given prior seasons. Okay. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to go with you on that because three out of the five games. I would say we've broken even. One was pure fuckery, and then one was, um, yeah, we got taken care mm. of. Mm. So that's that's a a very different line of um, when we're talking about umpires, isn't it? We're usually on the very very opposite end of well positive. <laughs> I would say in our defence, what I've always claimed, not just when it comes to us. Because I recognise we're not objective, and I, I recognise yeah, I'm not yeah, objective. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but that's what why we're a fan channel and not football analysts. Uh, I'd I'd say, yeah, we're doing all right. All right. And well, usually, I'm... usually I'm like the opposite. I'm I'm raging. Long may that continue. Yeah, I haven't felt the need to rage anyway. But I'm, I tell I'm, you what, if Friday night we see fuckery again, I'm I, I'm coming for you, just like you're coming for coming for Papley. I'm coming for you. Well, interstate it's always hard. Interstate's always. Oh, hard. now he's backtracking. Now he's backpedaling. Yeah, don't start me on Papley. All right. Uh, so, what's your prediction? I. Are you sticking um, with? You said four points. I did I remember say now. You said four points, point Adelaide. I said a four-point loss to the Bobbits. However, I am now Ooh. going back on that, and I am, yeah, I am tipping a win by five points. So, unfortunately, a bit of a heart stopper, but we got taken care of on Friday night, which was nice because I got to watch the finish, knowing that. Although, what did I what did I write in the group chat with ten with like six minutes to go? Do you remember? No. We say a lot of crap in that chat, the the six of us or seven of us, however many of us there are in there. I, I, I said, we can't lose this, can we? Because I think Bulldogs kick two in a row and I started to panic a little bit. Oh, towards the end, yeah. But that shows where I was. I'm not mm. completely ever feeling safe. No, no, I'm with you. So anyway, what are you, are you sticking with your win? So you've... You've spoke, talked Adelaide up, and I worry. I worry about the bigger ground, which seemed to suit Port, didn't suit us the week before. Oh, I'm going to go an Adelaide win by ten points. Oh, 
<laughs> okay, and and everything has evened itself out now. The equator Not, is now back where it should be. <laughs> we are both on our positive, negative sides of the coin. Normality has been restored. That's right. Yeah, I she yeah, I just worry. You're worry. Letting, I, you're, letting, you're letting the little gremlin on your shoulder just jump in, jump in and uh, sway you. I was hurt this week by my soccer team, Arsenal. Well, don't bring that baggage through, to your house. Through the title, away. I've got so much baggage. You've got to leave I'm, that bag. You've got to leave your shit on the shelf when it comes I, to other sports. That I've stays got, where it is. I've got more, ba- more baggage than toll. That's how much baggage I've got. So, uh, it's your responsibility to leave that shit on the shelf and come refreshed and refined to the, this, this, the new code. Mm. Can't project onto AFL, onto the onto Essendon. Uh, but on, quite honestly, part of it is is um, you do protect yourself, kind of emotionally, by 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 expecting the worst. Yes, and, but and being but pleasant. Genu- but this is a podcast. Are you genuinely? Do you genuinely think, or you're in self preservation? Yeah, mode? no, no. You've kind of convinced me about Adelaide having turned the corner. And so I reckon a few weeks ago I'd say we'll win. But, yeah, on the positive, we had a day extra rest, which I do think is important given we've, we're sort of stretched thin, like in terms of squad, like we've just basically got our best 22 and, and that's it. It just falls off a cliff. So the extra day will help. Uh, but yeah, I, I can't. I, there is a world I can see all these little, like small Adelaide players running around in space, and we know that one of our Achilles, Achilles heels has been defending space in transition. Don't they don't have too many buzzy backline, um, and their big defender Butts is out as well. Yeah, that's true. As well as Crouch, who's their big bodied mid, so they're kind of a bit. Stretch down back. I wasn't back. thinking back. I was thinking more midfield and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And their midfield and again, my my thing for them is their forward line. Ben Keys, who I'm adamant should be in a boy band. He does not belong on a football field. He's <laughs> he belongs in NSYNC. Uh He's in very is good he the, form. But which which man, is he the the sort of. The bad boy member with the eyebrow ring, or is he the pretty no, boy, or which he's one is he? The pretty boy is the pretty boy with the blonde streaks and the I don't even know the bouffant of a hairstyle that he has. He's just a very pretty looking gentleman, hmm. and uh, he just does not look like he should be getting his hands dirty. But he's performing beautifully, and he gives he always gives a hundred percent effort. So he'll go till he drops. And as I said to you about the big ruckman, I rate him super highly. He is often down in Melbourne um, in his off-season and trains at the gym as well um, that I go to, and he's a very nice guy as well. So, um, But I rate him highly, so the Rucks will have to continue their their form as well. I don't know. I think we could, we could get a bit one up on them with our pace. What? We got pace? Yeah, we certainly did against <laughs> the Bulldogs. Maybe that's just because it was at Marvel, but... We looked pacey. We did. We did. We looked pacey. When, when those handballs, the connective handballs were coming off, oof, even Stringer looked like Usain Bolt. Yeah, well, the, you can move the ball quicker than you can run. Yeah, so when yeah. you're... But when that's you're what I'm talking about pace. Yeah. That, if you don't yeah. have... It's, it's easier to, to complete a, a accurate handball than it is to run your legs. Hmm, True. So, I don't know. I just reckon we could – and I reckon the boys – it, it can go two ways. They're either going to be overconfident like they were against Port after mm. a good win because the, we all know that they know that the Bulldogs game was a good win. They know that. You heard Harry Mackay talking – Ben Mackay talking yep. on his podcast about how good it was. You heard all the – you know, Harry Jones on the interviews talking about how good it was. So, they know how significant the win against the Dogs mm. was, how good it, it looked and how good it was. So – they're either going to be drinking their own bathwater and overconfident, or they're going to be just hungry for more. By the hungry way, just to repeat. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, as an aside, I love the way, like, great win, and then just the whole talk all week is about how Luke Beveridge and the Bulldogs are a mess. 
are we that bad that you lose to us and suddenly that's the the main talk literally they have they have an they've got stars on every line in their team Mm. i don't care how bad you you are coached you have the number one player in the competition arguably they're yep. one of the number one clearance players in your team. You've got arguably the gener- next generational player in your forward line. Like, yeah, but all the talk was about how terrible the Bulldogs are. Fun. But that's okay. So we we kind of want that. We don't want to be talked up. True. Go under the radar. That's right. Best best we don't because, you know what, as much as, as I've told you this before, they say they don't read it or don't see it, but they all see it. All of them see it. Mm. Everything that's said and written, they see it. Does that include things said by podcasts? Should we? Because if, so, if so, I feel, just to any Bomber, fan, bomber players out there. Um, Believe yeah. it or not, some actually... Like and, think, like and subscribe. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure they will. Believe <laughs> it or not, some actually enjoy it more than others. So others that are around, I mean. Oh, you, you, you've got intel to say that some people have listened. I'm not, well, I'm not so far as to put my put my good name against that, but yeah, I reckon there's a few little whispers about the podcasts, a few little conversations happening about all the podcasts. Well, you were dumb enough to put this put your name to this podcast already by being on it. So that's um, true. and sponsoring it, so uh, that's too late for that. But anyway, I put my business to it. I put my name to it. Correct. Got nothing correct. left. Well. Yeah, I'm going to say 10 points a loss. But obviously, I hope and pray that uh, that's not the case. Well, how's this going to work? Are you going to be sober watching it? Do you Are all the all the guys that you're going away with, do they watch football? Do they barrack for Essendon? Or are you going to be out on a bender? You're not going to be home watching it? No, look, it's a bunch of guys. There's a few English guys. Uh, so I don't know. I watch the game. I watch the game. I th- I hope, but I don't think it's going to be. Yeah, it, well, it's going to be pre- predominantly golf focused the weekend, and right. le- it's not going to be a bunch of twenty five year olds running around naked, shaving each other's eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> we're too old. We're too old for that. Okay, that doesn't yeah. answer my question. Are you going to sit down and actually watch? The game, I like, hope so. I hope okay. so. Yeah. Well, there's a, a possibility you won't. There's a possibility. Are I'll there any have... Essendon supporters on this boys' cruise? Mm, no, don't think so. Okay, but general yeah. footy, football fans, or not really? Mm, not really. Okay, soccer fans. Uh, yeah, more, more a few English guys, but okay. um, that's all right. That's all right. I'll, I'll be watching it. Just go lock yourself in a dark room. Yeah, worst case, I'll be watching it on my phone. So. Yeah. Okay. So you'll be you'll be about. I will be. I will be. Yeah. Right. Anything else on the game before we go to the Fiona's catch? I don't think so. I think that's a. I just we just literally you owe us in terms of the foot universe, footy gods, no suspensions and no injuries. This is the week that I would. I mm. very desperately want no suspensions and no injuries. We you owe us. Do. You owe us. You took down Zach Reed when I asked you not to. I asked you specifically to take care of that boy and to allow him the year injury-free, and now you owe me. So no injuries, no suspensions, Anzac Day. Yeah, did you – what happened? Were your prayers not answered? Did no, you pray- I – I don't think I've got the sage out for long enough. I don't. Maybe I've just got to. I've got to do it twice a week and have my little seance. I don't know, but I, I know I'm owed. That's all. All right. And I'm, and I'm cashing in. <laughs> yeah. So no injuries. Yeah. Yeah. No suspensions. Absolutely. Charlie Cameron getting off. By the way, comment. No fucking comment. You want to hear about? You want to talk about good guys? Peter Wright is not just a good guy; he's an exceptional guy with the cleanest record. You could, you could, you could not find one speck of dust on his record. So don't talk to me about where's the good guys tax for him. 
Yeah, but we didn't ask for a good guy. Um, oh, yeah, that's, that's it. You, yeah, you said that last week, didn't you? You said, why didn't we just go in and, and tell? See, you said it last week. Yeah, you, yeah. you saw this coming. You said, why didn't we just go in and say how good of a guy he was? I'm not just a pretty face. Why don't we just? Wow. And, yeah. But, you know, it's let, let's be honest. It's all predetermined by the AFL. Absolutely. And what they that's want on a, given, on a given day or week. That's right. And then, But not even to appeal it. Like, what weak shit is that? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Said no comment, but there we go. Uh, all right. There's a few questions for, for for the couch, Fiona's couch. Almost tempted to do two, but you kind of got annoyed with me last week when I... Just the one. You've got to keep them coming back. All right. Shall I go for the most juicy one? You can do, you know what I was thinking. If we're doing if we're doing the podcast, if it's going to come out Monday, but then we we have to do Fiona's forecast on the on the Wednesday. That's two pod. You're getting two podcasts early next week. Well, look, people just love windsock, man. They don't, they they they'd like one seven days a week is the feedback I get. Oh, really? So okay. They'll they'll be happy. They'll be happy. All right. All right. Go. You ready? Yep. You ready? Go. Go. Now, this, could, this question is very hard to answer because it, 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 I feel it contains only half the information, so you have to go with it. You ready? Okay. I'm keeping a huge secret from my husband. Huge. Do I tell him? Question mark. I'm keeping a huge secret from my husband. Huge. Do I tell him? What? The owner's couch, what do you have to say? Firstly, I, I feel jibbed because I need the secret. Hmm. Maybe the secret will incriminate uh, her or him. Oh. Okay. Uh, you know how I feel about cheating. And so yeah. if this is a situation where you're having an affair, my... My opinion is have your have your fun, but if you're not in the relationship, you need to end it and not and not partake in the dishonesty. So well, it's dishonesty that, already. You can you can assume dishonesty. We don't know yeah. what about. But I guess it depends. Like, is your big secret a secret bank account with hundreds of thousands of dollars? Well, I would say to that. No, you don't necessarily have to tell your husband because if that's your need to flee in the night because he's back, he's smacked you over the face and you need to, in case of fret, you need to flee, well, I would say no, you don't have to tell that secret. But if you've got a sweet boy toy on the side or girl toy on the side, well, my, my advice is that you need to end your marriage because there's so much wrong happening there, but the main part of that is... What what happiness are you getting leading this double life? What what joy are you getting? You could you could broad just like broaden the lens a little bit. That's really isn't that the heart of the matter? Is like what's the secret? Why are you keeping it? Yeah, and, and, really, and that's two examples of two different secrets. But yeah, but broadly speaking, since I don't know your secret, I'm going to say if you're feeling if it's bringing up feelings of uncertainty, it's keeping you up at night, which clearly it is because you've sent in a question to the couch and you need your, it's on your mind, I would say that it's probably causing you some internal grief and your consciousness, your conscious, conscience knows. Conscience, yeah. Your conscience knows. Uh, okay, that, consciousness, possibly. Yeah, true. Subconscious. Um, knows the right thing to do and the thing you want to do is to be honest. Because once you will have a big weight lifted off your shoulders, once you are honest, because holding this in, you're second guessing everything you do, everything you say, you have to watch yourself in case you slip up and, and you know, say the secret. You're, you're, so, you're probably so far gone in this secret holding that there's going to be a war and a blow up when it does come out and you're avoiding that right now. Currently, it's it's bringing it's clearly bringing you angst. So you need to pass the hot potato, 
and let it go. Let it let it leave your life. Take the consequences. Take take the war that's coming. Expect it. Preempt it. Prepare for it. Prepare for if it's a breakdown of your marriage. You just gonna, you're going to have to take it because it's holding you, the, the secret is holding you hostage at this point, and you need to be released from it. Because whatever this secret is holding, the longer the secret is holding you hostage, what's mm. meant for you in life, those doors are going to stay closed. Because this this secret is consuming your life. Whether you think it's not, it's it's going to be in your subconscious no matter what you think. You could say, no, it's not. It's just something that I have. Well, I disagree. It's 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 preventing the thing the person you're meant to be, the thing you're meant to have in your life, the person you're meant to have in your life, it's keeping those doors, those possibilities, those opportunities closed because this is an all consuming, it sounds like it's an all-consuming thing. You said huge twice, so. Yeah, she, yeah. Um, he or she, I shouldn't just say she, could be he, mm. um, did say huge twice. So I would say you're probably right. It's probably not something that, you know, maybe happened 10 years ago and you don't need to, you know, you could get away with not telling him. You just feel a bit guilty about it. Yeah. And your question is, do I hurt him or not? It sounds like it's it's bigger than that. You're right. Yeah. So if you, mm. don't, want to, if you don't want to do it for your husband's sake to come clean and to be honest for him, then you do it for you. Do it for you and the baggage that's going to be – dropped by your side and the future that is available to you on the other side of this hostage holding mm. because right now you're just in fear you're in fear of what telling the secret is going to bring you're in fear of holding the secret and so you're living a life in pure fear and the fear is holding you hostage so you're being held hostage by a few at the minute so i would say girlfriend or boyfriend time to Re release yourself. Good advice. You know what? I'm going to break with form again. I'm going to give you another question. I'm sorry. I've got to do it. I've got, no, no, I've got to do it. I've nah, got to do it. It's, the couch is closed. I'm, I'm, it's a bit, it's a bit I, frivolous. I, I charge, <laughs> charge $2,500 per, per minute. You cannot afford me. Well, I'll answer it if you don't. So no, you ready? no. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a big one. You ready? Why is because I've got the answer for this one a bit like last week. Why is sandwich meat round when bread is square? <laughs> Can't even make a motherfucking singer help. <laughs> Why is sandwich meat square round when bread is square? <laughs> well, I've got the answer. The last part is funny. He sounds like he's high. And he or she is high and they just want a sandwich. Yeah. And it's just occurred to them that sang processed it's the processed ones that he's talking or she's talking about, the round sandwich. It comes round, like the, well, salami is yeah. always round. Yeah. But um and sandwich bread is square. <laughs> and I have got I've got the answer, brother. What? Pita bread. <laughs> no, but you can't bread. Have like, done. You can't have like a sometimes don't you just want a just a Full blown, like white bread, bad for you sandwich. No, never. I I don't personally. I'll have the. Uh, I'm fortunate. I've got the Italian bakery at the Preston Market has the greatest sourdough in the world. Oh, and the you know, you know me. The Panna di Casa is my favourite. It does, and the Panna di Casa, and it does, and they do the um, they do the focaccia with uh, one with sardines. Uh, not sardines. Um, oh, what, are the, what are the little salt salt bombs called again? Anchovies. One with anchovies on top. Oh, yeah. Delicious. One with garlic. Uh, yeah, and they do yeah. cornetti or croissants, as we call them here. Um, yeah, and that kind of rustic bread is just sensational. And you know what's oh, good about it? After two, after two days, you've got to throw it out. No. Why are you doing that? Make breadcrumbs. Well, you can, yeah, you can do that. But after two days, tell me you're not throwing out this beautiful Italian bread. No, no or what you, you what you can do? You just is you, you just you just like floor yeah. me. You can make it into little like um. You breadcrumb like that shit. Or big big sort of croutons that 
Breadcrumbs, they give you the best breadcrumbs. All you do, what my nonna does, and she chucks it in the oven and you make what's called crunchy bread. And then you bring it out and you cut this once it's crunchy. You, sm you just give it the biggest drizzle of olive oil. Tomatoes from the garden, you mm. cut them, you get the, oh, you, yeah. you cut them in pieces. Bit of salt. Stacks, stacks of salt. Then you cut mm. about 16 cloves of garlic. This is the important part. It's got to be garlic central and you crush the garlic over it and then you get the fresh basil from the garden and then and it, and and the the crunchy bread actually absorbs the all the oil and the tomato juices and then it just becomes this oh my god it's delicious yeah becomes this makeshift bruschetta like this yeah, yeah, yeah. bruschetta that's how they make it in italy the bruschetta yeah it's yeah. not on freaking pieces of toast that have been toasted like they get here that mm. we bastardize here that's how it's made and it's just the most delicious thing ever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen back to this podcast and write all this down. Uh, the other thing oh, I like... Oh, we could have a Fiona's kitchen now. Is That's going to be the last... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. We're going to have the couch, we're going to have the kitchen, and then we're going to have Solutions <laughs> Toilet. Um, the, the other thing I like to do, they've got the dinner rolls, but I'll, I'll do the barbecue, the yeah. meats, et cetera, and then into the barbecue, I'll turn them upside down and toast them on the... Beautiful. On the juices, the meat juices, and then roll. Big butter. Oh, no, and, we don't uh, do butter. And you have like fifty-seven of them. Yeah. No, you got to have butter on it. Got to have butter Bread's on it. the best. No, I'm not a butter person what? at all. I'm a I'm a saucy person. Like like I'll just smother all my chips in aioli and stuff like that. Yeah, but I don't do butter. No. What about the Italian butter pasta? That's delicious. Burro, the burro. Yeah. Burro. Um, no, no, not for me. Give me pesto. I'll, I'll eat pesto till the day I die. Butter, lemon. I like the oil. Uh, Alolio. Al yeah. Pasta yeah, oil. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I like. Yeah. The, if, that's if I've got nothing. I've got no sauce made in the freezer. I'll um, and I've got fresh parsley from the garden. I'll uh, I'll just have some beautiful olive oil. But the but the thing and there like, is the, ol the like. olive oil yeah. has to be like extreme high quality for that to be mm. nice. For that pasta to be nice, can't just be the shit you get from the supermarket. It's got to be oh, from, really? the, from the deli, like really good quality. Yeah. yeah, extra virgin, of course. Ex absolutely, yeah, really yeah. good quality. Yeah. Okay. Fiona's speaking of speaking of food. Hmm. Speaking of of delights. Yes. I was very lucky that I got to sample some absolute amazing, amazing sweet treats from fellow listeners okay. of the pod. Yep, Jonathan who reached out yep. and uh, he and his lovely wife, um, Yota, actually, uh, they make authentic Greek sweets and they reached did out. Say, did you say, wait, wait, did you say Yoda? Is he married to Yoda? Yota, yes. Yota, oh, Yota, with a T. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, she, makes, Yoda the Star Wars she makes the most, don't start on fucking Star Wars. She makes the most incredible, incredibly authentic. I'm not. I'm not talking about that process shit that you get. You know, it's just a, um, you know, um, mm. a what's it called in the kitchen? Like a, they light them all up, and it's a, they make it in bulk. Oh, okay. Well, well like um, sort of shit you get in the supermarket. Like a processing line. Like what's the? Okay. Oh, oh, like like a factory factory processed. Uh... What's the term? You know the term. Conveyor belt. Conveyor tongue. belt. You know what I'm trying to say, though. Aren't yeah, you? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, there's a God. difference between handmade, home cooked shit, and you know, um, processed food. That's right. But yeah. Anyway, the point is the most incredibly tasting, authentic Greek sweets you could ever get from. Oh, even I, love, the, I love Greek sweets. Even I the bakeries up. these yeah. days can taste a bit like even the syrup can taste so sickly sweet that you just know that it's come from this from a costco style like large you know pot mm. of you know that cost five dollars for 16 kilos do you know what i mean um so i had the pleasure of of um tasting these sweets and i thought i can't believe that more people don't know about it so Thank you so much, Yoda and Jonathan. They were absolutely incredible. I am not ashamed to say that I ate multiple from the box hmm. and did not share. I've left myself one, I think. 
for the next day. That well, was, it was the Greek baklava, and I did not share. What about your fellow podcasts? Then, but like I'm here, I'm right here. I know. I uh, just it was just too good. You're gonna have to. You know what you're gonna have to do? You're gonna have to put it in order. Oh, hang on. This is a business. Yes. Oh, so she runs a business. Yeah. Cut them out. Yes, I can. I can definitely. The business is called Soul Cuisina. Now, mm. in Italian, kitchen is cucina. So I'm assuming that in Greek, cuisina is the word for kitchen. And well, la, cu la cuisine in French is kitchen. There you go. So I'm assuming that means soul kitchen. But please, if you're listening, especially if you're Greek Orthodox and you have your Greek Easter coming up in two weeks, yeah. Yoda is doing an amazing, amazing array um, of desserts and sweets. And you can just order some to take to the family. They will. You can tell them you made them. They will think the world of you. So Soul Cuisina, K O U Z I N A, is their business. Um, lovely people. S O U L S O U L S O U L Cuisina. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, absolutely amazing people. Excellent supporters. Listening supporters of the podcast and. Um, just I don't do shout outs much in terms of on my business page because I just not that I don't have things to shout out, but I just I never f feel like I want to uh, mislead my followers no. by by shouting out something that's not 100 percent something that I would purchase myself. But this definitely is these. I have a very soft spot for small businesses, sole traders who make their passion who are in their passion project phase and are, and are putting all their heart and soul into authentic keeping the authenticity of their heritage alive and that's what yoda is doing so please please um give her a follow give the business a follow and order some sweets i don't know if she has a minimum on things but i'm sure you could discuss what you want with her she does all that she also does bombonieri like and and honestly i would be wrapped to receive a little you know what? Greek, Greek I sweet for a bombardieri love, rather than another candle, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I love the um, the way they do the almond sweets. Yeah, it's a very Greek thing. Yeah, yes, she does those, like the ones mm. in the crescent. The yeah, crescent grape, yeah. yeah, she definitely does those. Um, but my favorite, I will, I will travel anywhere for a baklava, and um, that's what she made me the Greek baklava, and it was to die for. So you could just taste the freshness, okay. not simply sweet. As I said, I ate multiple of them and didn't feel sick. So, anyway, long well, you way to say share the love. No, no. Ch well, check out Soul Cuisina. I Cuisina. mean, that's high, high praise indeed from the baker extraordinaire, Fiona from Something About Cake. So, uh, great shout out to the guys and Bomber supporters. So, we should support Bomber small businesses. If you've got a small business and you're a Bomber fan. Um, Get in touch. Get in touch, yeah, particularly if you make beautiful food. But just remember there's two on the podcast. <laughs> you, know, you know, like I'm right here, you know. I, I kind of started this thing, but hey, that's all okay. All right, all right. I'll that's pick okay. some up for you. I'll put it in order with Yoda and I'll get I'll uh, I'll get some I'll get some your way. How's that? Uh, what month's your birthday in? Uh, it's October. So All right, well October. We'll do it for October. All right. That's a deal. For your birthday right. I'll get I'll get you some some of her sweet treats. Done, done. Well, thanks to everyone that listened. Check out something about cake and soul cuisina as well. Um, go bombers! Hopefully, we can beat the crows in fucking Adelaide, where we tend to lose. But we'll find out. So, go bombers! Thanks to everyone that listened. Thanks, and guys. We'll see you Tuesday. So the light from the sun would not burn me on my bum when I shoot the moon. Hill's got a tribute to the ground with a pulverizing tackle from Ambrose. Oh!